Now watch this. Verse 6. So they are no longer two, he says, but one. Therefore, what God joins together, let no ex, old boyfriend, old girlfriend, or lawyer put asunder. Whom God joins together, he says, let no lawyer, no judge, no ex, boyfriend, girlfriend, or spouse, or even prophet, put asunder. The emphasis here is whom God joins together. God does not marry everybody. The only people that God actually marries are the ones Jesus says qualifies in the beginning. So every marriage that is not in the beginning qualification is married by the state. Let me put it another way. Coming to a church building and standing here does not guarantee that God join you together. Most of the marriages that I have seen in churches should not have been done in churches. They should have gone to the downtown registrar office and let some legal person just kind of speak over them. Why? Because if they join you together, when you're ready, they can put you asunder. Let me prove how that's so crazy. You come before God, you say, to get married, but then you go before the lawyer and the judge to get divorced. That's confusing to me. If you come before God to be put together, then when you're ready to be put apart, invite everybody back. Come on, let's talk about this. Get the bridesmaid, get the groomsmen, get the music, get all the flowers, and make sure God is present, and say, now we want to be put asunder. I dare you. How dare you come before God to be married and go before the judge to be divorced? You hypocrite, you. <laughs> I have a suggestion. Whenever you are about to print your wedding invitations, put on the bottom, and if we plan to get a divorce, keep this invitation. That's how ridiculous it is to walk down these aisles in a white dress and a blue and in a dark suit and tell God I do before him and go before a judge and says I don't. Verse 9, anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness and marries another woman commits adultery. She said, look, I didn't create divorce. I don't agree with it. He says, but at least I'll give you a standard. The standard is you shouldn't even think about divorce unless the other party has violated the marriage bed. In other words, the only qualification God allowed for you to do what you invented was sexual corruption. Now why does he use the word adultery? I'm going to give you a quick lesson. According to Jesus, there's no other grounds for divorce. You can't say, well, I, uh, I don't love him anymore. I don't love her anymore. It doesn't qualify for divorce. Or, we, we outgrew each other. Still ain't qualified. Or, I got saved. Still ain't qualified. <laughs> the only way out of what you can't wait to get in is adultery. That means that right now in heaven, God has a lot of people already and still married who are already divorced on earth. They're still married in heaven. God said, no, they ain't qualified, so they're married. That's why they keep committing adultery over and over again with other people, because as far as heaven is concerned, you are still married. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another challenge. If you get married, listen carefully, this is scriptural standard now, not religious standard. Because religion, you know, they make their own standard. Christianity is a religion. It makes its own standard. I'm talking about the Bible now, the kingdom. The kingdom says, if you marry a person and you decide to separate, you cannot marry anybody else, no matter how long, as long as that other person does not commit adultery. So a 
a lawyer and a church cannot destroy a marriage in God's kingdom. The only one that can destroy a marriage in God's kingdom is an adulterer. Hmm. So if you decide you can't live with somebody anymore, not on the grounds of, the, of adultery, and you live apart, God's watching. Because in heaven you're still married. And I don't care how many women who wink at you or how many men wink at you and say they love you. You can't get involved. Why? In heaven you're still married. As long as that other person does not commit adultery, you are married before God. This is kingdom standard. Now when they commit adultery and you know and prove it, you are free to marry again. That's the grounds of kingdom. Do you know why? Because whenever you get married and you consummate that marriage with sex, blood is spilled. That's why two men cannot consummate a marriage. And that is why two women cannot consummate a marriage. Why? There's no blood covenant possible. See, marriage is not about rings. You know, in San, Francisco, they, in San Francisco, they keep putting rings. It ain't about rings. It's about blood. Oh, you don't understand. It's about blood. That's why the Bible talks so much about the blood. Because the blood is the foundation of both life and death. Life and death is in the blood. That's why every female comes to earth locked up. Completely locked up. Comes packaged. Locked up. Every female, every female comes to this planet locked up. And the, de the designer did a good job. He locked her up with a little film of skin called the peanut. And that peanut, the skin, is filled with blood. It's actually an organ, the doctors say. And all the organ supplies is blood. It locks her up. And the only way to open up a female is to spill blood on yourself and her. It's a blood covenant. So when a woman is opened by a man for the first time, there's a covenant cut. No matter what you say, God marks in heaven a little note. Covenant. Follow me now. That's why sex is only relegated to marriage. Because you don't want to cut a covenant with anybody who ain't going to be with you forever. So my wife and I cut a covenant on our wedding night blood on both of us matter of fact if you read the scriptures carefully you'll understand how deep this thing is to God God told Moses that when a man and woman got married when they went into the wedding bed the first night the priest had to stand outside the door waiting for the sheet and standing next to the priest read the Old Testament was the whole community and their parents with stones in their hands. And if the sheet came out and there was nothing on it, somebody died. We need to bring that back. Clap loud. Don't get nervous. I know some of y'all ain't got no sheet at all right now, but I'm going to help you. But that's how serious God takes the covenant. I'm talking to singles, watch this. So, when the blood covenant is cut between me and my wife in that marriage bed, undefiled, that means there's no problem in the bed, then if I was to have sex with another woman, I cut another covenant. Now you know, the principle of covenant is, the only way to break a covenant is to cut a new one. That's why you got the Old Testament covenant and the New Testament covenant. And what broke the covenant? It was blood on the cross. Oh, you don't get it. So the blood of bulls and goats and sheep and turtle doves in the Old Testament was a covenant that lasted for one year. But here comes Jesus, the Lamb of God. He's going to cut another covenant. This one is forever. Woo! But it was what? Love.